Following a military coup on the 1st of February, Myanmar has plunged into violence and chaos. Despite a bloody crackdown, resistance against military rule continues. Some protesters have taken up arms as part of what's being called the People's Defense Forces. Dozens of ethnic armed groups have been fighting the military for decades. Some of the most powerful ones are now training anti-coup demonstrators. So who are Myanmar's ethnic militias and what do they want? To understand what's happening now, you need to know about Myanmar's complex history. Myanmar, also known as Burma, is one of the most diverse countries in the world, with around 135 ethnic groups. These are grouped under eight major ethnic races, defined by the regions they live in. The Buddhist Burma are the largest group. They make up two-thirds of the 54 million population. The others are Kachin, Shan, Chin, Rakhine, Gaya, Gaing, and Mong. The country was under colonial British rule for 124 years. And some experts argue it was during this time that separate ethnic identities were strengthened. Before the, the British came, many people actually intermixed and, and identity was much more fluid. Ethnic groups in different parts of the country started to see themselves in those terms because the British began to organize society in that way. And benefits um, and um, opportunities would also come to those who were identified as being minorities, who would be hired and brought into the colonial system. So, for instance, ethnic minorities were often um, given educational opportunities uh, to learn English. After World War II, the country gained independence. A civil war broke out not long after. Many other ethnic groups went into immediate rebellion. You had very different groups. Some wanted to work with the government. Others wanted to break away and form their own state. Revolutionary independence leader Aung San had tried to broker an agreement that promised ethnic autonomy. But he was killed six months before independence. So the spirit of the Panglong Agreement was never realized. In 1962, the military staged a coup and set up a junta that focused on pushing a united national Burma identity. The military found itself fighting long protracted conflicts with various ethnic groups, often at the same time. A citizenship law introduced in the 1980s further aggravated tensions when it excluded certain ethnic groups like the Rohingyas. There have been various attempts to reach a peace deal. In 2015, a nationwide ceasefire agreement was signed, but not all ethnic armed groups took part. Aung San's daughter, Aung San Suu Kyi's party, the National League for Democracy, came to power later that year they vowed to continue the peace process. But the NLD government continued this peace process, calling it the 21st Century Union Peace Conference or the Panglong process, uh, to continue with these nationwide ceasefire agreement uh, discussions with the remaining ethnic armed groups. But of course, the recent military coup on February the 1st has uh, brought an end to all of that. But the coup has brought some of the country's ethnic minorities closer together to face a common enemy. A number of ethnic groups announced their support for the protesters and condemned the military's use of violence against them. The Karan National Liberation Army and the Kachin Independence Army have launched attacks. In response, the military has carried out airstrikes and ground attacks. Hundreds of thousands of people are believed to have been displaced. Now, the National Unity Government formed by ousted lawmakers, is promising if democracy is restored to establish a fairer federal Myanmar. After the February 1st coup, there has been this general awakening across the different ethnic lines, class, culture, religion, race, that have really brought about this recognition 
particularly among uh, I think the Burma ethnic group. If we have experienced this kind of brutal treatment and uh, hardships uh, under uh, this, this imposition of military rule, uh, how must have the situation been like for um, our ethnic brethren across the country? If the People's Defence Forces and the ethnic armed groups form a united army, the military could face an unprecedented armed resistance. But it's too early to tell if, after that case of fighting, they can unite. And even if they do, the Myanmar military will be a formidable enemy.